In this video, we're going to talk about the greatest integer function. This is how we define it. f r to r defined by y equals to fx equals to, and we use square brackets for this function, square brackets, and within that we have x, and x belongs to r. This means that f is a real function. This means that the domain is all real values, and this is the definition of x. Let's look at this more closely. y equals to greatest integer function of x. What this means is that we'll get the greatest integer that's less than or equal to x. Greatest integer less than or equal to x. Whatever you put in as input, the output will be the greatest integer that's less than or equal to that input. That's what this function is doing. Let's look at an example. We have these three integers five, six, and seven, and let's say we input six point eight. What do we get from this function if we input six point eight? Think about it. Well, this function will give us integers that are less than or equal to the number. So, what are the integers that are less than six point eight? They are five and six. In fact, they're not just five and six. There could be many more: four, three, two, and one. All of these integers are less than six point eight. In fact, now that I think about it, there are infinite integers that are less than six point eight. Well, the greatest is definitely six. So, this will give six as the output. So, if you input six point eight, it will give you six as the output. Let's take one more example. Suppose you have these integers four, five, six, and seven, and you put in five as an input. What will you get as an output? Will you get four or will you get five? Think about it. Attention to detail is important here. Okay. So it's going to give you an integer that's less than or equal to x. Which are the integers that are less than five? Well, there are four and three and two and so on. But is there an integer that's also equal to five? Yes, of course. Five is equal to five, so five is also in the competition. And because five is the greatest of them all, the winner will be five, and that's going to be your output. So if you put in an integer, you'll get the same integer as the output. The way I like to remember this is: this function rounds down to the nearest integer. Whatever you put in as the input, I'll round it down. To the nearest integer. For 6.8, I'll not round round up. I'll round down. I'll get to 6. If I'm at 6, I'll stay at 6. If I'm at 5.9, I'll go down to 5, and so on. That's how I like to think about it. All right. Now that we have the definition clear and we have a few examples, let's try plotting the graph. If you want to give this a shot yourself, pause the video and sketch it out. Let's do this together. This is our x-axis. This is our y-axis. And we want y equals to greatest integer function of x. What values should we begin with? I'd say let's start with integers, because when we put in integers, we're safe. Whatever we put in, we get the same output. So if you put in zero, you'll get zero. For one, you get one. For two, for you get two. For three, you get three, and so on. This also works for negative values. Whatever you put in, if that's an integer, this function will not touch it. What about the values that are not integers? What about the values that are between zero and one? Okay, so the fractions between zero and one are less than one. So if you have to round down, we'll go to zero. So for all these values, we'll stay at zero. This is what we get. Put in anything as an input here, the output will be zero. Notice that one is open here because for one, the output is one and not zero. All right. What about the values between one and two? Well, for these fractions, if you round them down, we end up at one. So for values between one and two, we should get one as an output. So this is what we'll get. For values between two and three, we get two as an output. For values between three and four, we'll get three. For values between four and five, we get four, and so on. This also works in the other direction. For values between minus one and zero, because we are rounding down, we'll go down to minus one, and the pattern continues. This is what we get as the graph of y equals to greatest integer function of x. Now, using this graph, can we figure out the domain and range? For domain, we need to ask ourselves, what are the values of x that are allowed for this function? Well, all values are allowed. So this means the domain is all real numbers. Domain of f is x, where x belongs to R. What about the range? Well, all values are not allowed for the range. There are very specific values that this function throws out. All of these values are integers, so this means the range is y. Y belongs to i, where i is the set of integers. 
and with this we have the domain and range of the greatest integer function and because the graph of this function looks like a staircase this function is also called the step function